Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to this talk on root causing Kubernetes networking problems in an automated way. I wish this session was in person and uh, interactive. Uh, I still would like to have this as interactive as possible. So keep your questions coming in on chat and I'll answer them as we go. Uh, I will also uh, allocate some time at the end as much as possible for q and I've debugged network problems in about over 100 customer cost clusters in production. So whatever you hear today, as well as uh, what you'll see from a tool, a KDS network perspective, it is from my bad experience. All right, so what is this talk all about, right? Um, have you been in a situation where everything looks okay, uh, all of the pods are running, but then your app just won't communicate? Um, or it works most of the times, but does not work uh, sometime. Now, if you look at the, the cartoons there, that could turn from an exciting, happy person running Kubernetes and happen within Kubernetes to a very frustrated person, especially when it comes to net, a network networking problem. Uh, at the end of the talk, um, I'm hoping that you feel less intimidated about networking issues, uh, as well as a lot more comfortable within Kubernetes networking. And I leave you equipped with uh, a couple of tools and ways in which you can get to root causing a Kubernetes networking problem in an automated way, as well as, uh, if not getting to the problem, getting to the place where you can find right help. Uh, it's always beneficial to know some basics of Kubernetes networking. Um, rest assured, most of the hard stuff is going to be done by KDS Network at the tool. Um, in that sense, I will be talking about Kubernetes networking uh, in brief. Uh, it, it is a big topic in itself and a whole talk. So think of it as a crash course. Uh, we'll then look at the problems that you normally see uh, with Kubernetes networking and running pods within Kubernetes and how to classify these issues. Um, and then we'll look at what people do to resolve these issues. Uh, it's very interesting what people do and that slide is exciting. After that, the important part, we'll look at some open source tools and how we can use them to uh, debug any networking issue and how to go about that debugging process. And then we'll look at KTS Network in detail, uh, give you an introduction on it and a quick demo on how to work with it. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So Kubernetes networking, to keep it simple, right? There are three golden rules. Um, and when it comes to communication within Kubernetes, and they are that all containers within the Kubernetes cluster talk to each other without any kind of NAT, um, which means that the IP address that the container knows when you when you say run IP, IP config or if config or IP link show or IP address show, the address that you see is the same address that another pod or container outside of uh, uh, within that cluster would use. Uh, the other is that all nodes are able to reach these pods or containers without any NAT um, and vice versa, right? So without NAT is, a, and is an important uh, construct here. Now, we'll, to understand network problems and how to debug, it, it's uh, beneficial to know what the co components are that play into Kubernetes networking. So let's quick, quickly take a look at what these components are, which are responsible for everything from connecting your pod to your service and everything else within Kubernetes. Um, the first one is the CNI backend. Um, most of you are, would be familiar with it. You either run Calico or Flamel or Cilium and Shia. There are so many other uh, CNI backends out there. That's the component that provides pod connectivity. Uh, it connects multiple pods together, either on the same host or across hosts. It also does natting. So if a pod needs to reach the internet, it kind of connects uh, that pod over to the internet. Um, the next component is kube proxy. 
uh, it's responsible for the service construct. Uh, whenever you create a service within Kubernetes, QProxy comes into play and it works with IP tables, IPVS, um, uh, to give you that functionality of internal load balancing or east west load balancing. And then there is the load balancing implementation. If you're running a cluster cloud, you have AWS ELB, for example. Uh, Metal LB is an open source project that uh, is used in production to deploy um, a, a software load balancer uh, within the Kubernetes cluster. Then there is ingress. Uh, if you want to be able to connect multiple services and route through a single point, single entry point, either by using URL paths or ports, um, you can do L L4 ingress, L7 ingress. Uh, there are various examples there again. Uh, as you can see, as we go down this list, complexity increases. So there is service mesh, which is a lot more complex. You have Istio, Linkerd, Console Connect. And the whole Kubernetes networking stack, right? IP tables, IPVS, Linux networking stack, and yada, yada. So let's look at how communication works uh, across the cluster. Say, for example, two pods in an east-west manner. Uh, and say, let's say you have two pods. One is the blog app, the other is an index app. You have two copies of these. They're running on two different hosts uh, in your Kubernetes cluster. Now, if pod A or, or the blog app wants to talk to pod B uh, or the index app through the service, uh, assuming there's a service that's backing this uh, app or index B or pod B, how would it look like, right? So it for the first call would be to core DNS to get the uh, DNS resolution. Uh, if, if you are doing a HTTP get using the uh, service discovery uh, DNS address, then you'd need a cluster IP. Once you get that cluster IP, you reach out to, or, or the packet goes to IP tables to look up which pod it needs to get to. So it, it hits the IP tables with a service IP, it translates over to a pod IP, destination pod IP, and then goes to the particular pod. And on, 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 on the way back, contract and uh, uh, keeps track of these connections and then replaces the source destination IP accordingly. Um, and when it comes to north south, you have endpoints, node ports, and load balancers. Um, either north to south can mean either that the pod is trying to reach out to the internet, uh, or in most cases, what happens is a client is trying to connect to an application or a service that you're running within Kubernetes. Uh, how does that happen, right? So you have a load balancer service that, that you deploy within Kubernetes. You create a load balancer object that backs your pods or, or your app. Uh, it goes through something called a node port. Uh, so when a client tries to connect to your app, they hit the load balancer IP and, and then it translates over, selects one of the hosts that's part of your Kubernetes cluster, either where the pod is running or any of the other worker hosts. It goes to that host through uh, the node port uh, or a large high number port. And from there on goes through cluster IP and then to the pod. Uh, so this is the basic working of east-west traffic and north-south traffic within Kubernetes. Again, this, is, was a, this was a very short Kubernetes networking introduction. So with that, uh, let's start looking at what problems can exist, right, within Kubernetes. So the way I see it, when you have a networking issue, it's good to think about it in two two terms or two ways. Uh, one is think about the the impact, right? So what kind of an outage is it? Is it a complete service impact or is it partial outage or is it degraded performance? So place the problem that you see in one of these three buckets. Uh, it helps here, right? Because if it's a complete service outage, that means, and if you have multiple pods backing your service, that means that either there is a problem with your app or service, or there is something critically wrong within the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it's, it's a larger problem. Uh, whereas if it's a partial outage, that means maybe few pods in your of your service isn't working. Um, that's That's a lot more localized. That's mainly your app. Uh, or even if it's uh, the subsystem, it is something to do with specificity of that particular one app. Degraded performance is the most difficult uh, uh, 
problem to debug and fix. As you can see, the difficulty of debugging kind of increases when you start moving towards your right. Um, and debugging performance is difficult. We'll see what tools are there and how to do it. Um, but it's always good to classify your problem in these two uh, aspects. One is the impact severity or class type, I call it. The other one is where this problem is occurring, right? Or what type of problem it is. It could be an application problem, which means that your application isn't working um, and what you could do there, right? So some of the things that people end up doing is look at logs to see if there are errors in your app. Maybe there was a code problem, the process crashed, uh, file descriptors ran out, or if the app was just doing so much and running out of CPU or memory. Now let's look at uh, the other one could be platform components, right? So this is where a problem within the Kubernetes subsystem happens. Uh, DNS, load balancer, kube proxy service, there could be some kind of a problem happening uh, somewhere there. You're not able to get DNS access or load balancer access, kube proxy access. There could be a configuration problem, which is the third type or third bucket, which is very common. Uh, and in my experience, there is a problem in MTU setting somewhere across from your source to your destination that's causing an issue, or there are route, uh, routing issues, uh, or there is an IP overflow, just simply that your pod is not able to get an IP address and it just fails coming up. Um, now, how do people resolve these, right? Um, and this is a good uh, segue to what do you do today without any of the debugging tools, right? Uh, the first one is the big hammer approach. Um, what that means is there are two ways of how people fix it. One is by just hammering the pod or the deployment of the service or the ingress, just kill it, right? Uh, and let Kubernetes do the job, uh, respin it up or reschedule it on a different node and everything starts working magically. Uh, cloud native uh, architectures are meant to do that, are meant to uh, kind of have failures be tolerated, uh, but then it may not be as visible for stateful apps or it takes longer to fail over. Um, I've also seen people do this where they go ahead and delete the node uh, if there's a problem in, on the node with multiple apps and rather than fixing it, it might just be easier and quicker to delete it, especially if the Kubernetes cluster is running in the cloud. Just delete it and let AWS or Google or Azure kind of recreate that VM for you if it's an AI scale set. Um, the other uh, one that actually works most cases is asking for help. Um, that's always great. Even there, right? Uh, knowing which component to ask help for goes a long way. So if you know that there's a problem with Calico, if you know there's a problem with Flannel or, or the CMI backend, or if you know there's a problem with Kube proxy, you get to be able to reach those specific uh, groups and people are very helpful. So Slack or GitHub, you'll be able to get help there. Um, or I've seen this happen too, where people uh, find a hard networking problem and they revert back to saying, hey, let's just use yeah, VMs or not containerize it or you run it outside of Kubernetes or just not use a load balancer or, or an ingress and let's keep it simple and do something differently. So that happens quite a bit too. Uh, for people who are a lot more uh, excited and a lot more uh, exploring, they try to troubleshoot uh, live setups and uh, manually. And that's where today's talk should help. Now, um, troubleshooting workflow, right? Um, this is an in interesting topic. So what I wanted to do here was to put whatever I've seen in, out in the field with respect to problems and how I've gone about solving a problem and how I built KDS Netlook to start looking at it in, in an automated way. So the first thing that uh, I say is if there's a problem, uh, then, uh, see what the problem is, right? Uh, if, if, if a pod is crashing, it's, it's a lot more obvious, but then if everything is working, but you still don't have communication, it's a lot more harder to do. So see if there are other apps down. Uh, more often than not, there are other apps that aren't working, which means that it's not localized to your app. It could be more than one app. It could be specific to a node. And if it's specific to a node, then 
it's probably the subsystem or the Kubernetes components that might be causing an issue. Um, if it isn't, uh, then if it's an app specific problem, first would be to rule out your app itself. Look for logs, look for health metrics. Um, in all of these cases, right? If you have Prometheus, Grafana set up, uh, have time series data being pulled in, it's, it's, it's a lot better. The, there's a cube uh, metrics service, which gives you node statistics. There's a node exporter. There are a bunch of tools out there that allow you to monitor your Kubernetes cluster. Um, Again, let me put a warning out there. In, in a lot of cases, I've seen network policy within the Kubernetes cluster cause issues. I've seen firewall causing issues outside in your environment, which means external traffic uh, does not come in or go out. Um, and then search or TLS causing issues, which could be either MTU or again, firewall or just your app, right? Uh, anyway, now coming back to that flow chart, uh, if, other apps are down, then look at uh, your subsystem, right? Um, either case, what we need to do is to identify the problem type or the class. Like I said, is it partial complete or a performance degradation problem? In case of both partial and complete outage, what we do next is to see what type of traffic path the, the problem lies on. And here again, we classified into three things. One is east-west. And what I mean by east-west is applications within the Kubernetes cluster talking to each other. Somewhere there's a problem there. And that's normally through a Kubernetes service. The second one is uh, north-south. Uh, and and north-south again can be divided into two, uh, which is part to external, uh, which, which means that the part is trying to reach a, um, uh, object store or a database server running outside Kubernetes, or just for example, if it's running in cloud, it could be RDS. Um, and then the other uh, case is when clients are trying to connect to your service that's running within the Kubernetes cluster from outside of your Kubernetes cluster, either outside on, onto the internet or from your intranet, um, whatever it may be, right? So, First, figure that out. Uh, and then if, let's look at the east-west case where there's a problem with app to app. Uh, what would you do, right? Uh, you would first run uh, something like ping to see if pod A of your app A is able to reach pod B of your app B, right? Through IP, uh, through a specific container IP. If that doesn't work, there's definitely a problem either in the underlay or the overlay, which is your CNI backend. You're now kind of, localizing the problem, uh, which is a very important step. And then you'll be able to uh, get help. Uh, the second one is if that works, then look at DNS. Uh, try uh, pinging or reaching the destination service through DNS. You, you can use pod DNS. Uh, if that doesn't work, there's probably a core DNS issue, or again, that could be an ML issue um, or an overlay issue too. Uh, if that works too, then look at cluster IP. Uh, so if there's a service that's backing your destination app, then pick up the cluster IP for that particular service and then see if you're able to connect to that. If that works, uh, again, if that doesn't work, it's Q proxy. It could be a problem in, in IP table rules um, it, or it could just be the underlay. So the bubbles that I've put there is is where the problem class could could lie, which component, and the 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 blue boxes are the ones that you'd probably do manually to figure out if the problem if that's exactly the problem, and going down you would then look at uh, part to service DNS name, uh, if that works then you you'd, you'd look at IP tables uh, IPVS admin if if you're using IPVS for Q proxy. And then, of course, look at path empty. If there's an end, if if the amount, if the size of the packet that's allowed on the network is some size defined, and if you're trying to send larger packets, it's not going to go. Coming to north south, you would do similar. Uh, to add it to whatever you do in east west, you would also do port to gateway, right? So leaving the pod, it nats out of the node and gets to the gateway in your physical network. Uh, and are you able to reach your gateway first? Uh, if yes, then are you able to, is, is the path MTU fine again? Uh, if that's a yes too, then maybe there's a problem between your gateway and your internet, which means it could be a firewall. Uh, 
if that works too, then check NAT rules, IP table rules, if there's, if there's any problem there. Uh, more often than not, I've seen flannel or calico. If there isn't a rule uh, present in, in IP tables NAT table that, all, that tells that the packet that's leaving pod destined to external to the node needs to be NATed out, it's not going to work. So that that's another assumption. And if all else fails, you can always TCP dump and look at packets, which is a lot more complex. Um, so in the interest of time, quickly going forward, uh, open source tools, right? So there are a bunch of open source tools that you can use to figure out what where the problem lies. Uh, some of them that I've used or found helpful is NetShoot. NetShoot is a Docker image that essentially bundles all of the uh, binaries and programs that are useful to debug, TCP dump, IP ping, iperf. Uh, it even has uh, tools to look at syscalls, uh, various counters, performance metrics, and, and whatnot. And this is useful because you may have an app that does not even have a shell. And so how do you debug that live app that's not working? Uh, but then you, you need to be able to log into that pod to try it out, right? So net, you can what you can do is run net shoot, attach it to that particular uh, pod, and then run commands as if you're running within the network namespace. And what KTS Netlook does, or the way I've built it, is to do somewhat similar, right? So it's a binary, you run it on the node, and you give it you on the node where the source part is running. It's a source side debugging tool. Uh, and what it does is it uh, runs a couple of things on the node to check if communication on the node and configuration is fine. And then what it does is it kind of goes or runs inside the pod network namespace that you've specified and then runs as if it's running within the pod. So you're able to see or figure out problems within the pod that actually has a problem. Uh, and the other way of uh, debugging is by using probes or monitoring tools. So KubeNurse is a tool that deploys apps uh, on multiple boxes or nodes. And then it talks to each other. All of these agents or apps on each of these nodes talk to each other and provide metrics in terms of communication path, in terms of performance. So it's like a synthetic probe. So it gives you information of whether the Kubernetes cluster is healthy, whether the pod networking is healthy, but it doesn't tell you if why your pod is not working because it could be that there are other apps running on the same node that's working and you'd still get a healthy result, but your app might still be crashing. So that's your KTS Netlook and NetShoot to some extent comes into uh, play. KTS Net Checker is another probe based tool. Uh, it's not been updated for a long, long time, so I'll leave it as is. What to use when, right? This is important. So, again, going back to the slide where we looked at problem classification and, and common problems, what I did was I put, it, put down what you would normally do uh, uh, when you saw such problems. Um, and we've discussed this in the flow chart, so I'm going to skip this slide very quickly. But for example, if it's a complete outage, then you're probably better off looking at continuous monitoring and looking at probes. Uh, each of these links, I, I'll share the power slides, and each of these links will take you to GitHub repos where you get the app, you'll be able to install it and play, play for yourself. Um, now, for the automated way, how do you do things in an automated way, right? So that's where KTS Netlook comes in. So why KTS Netlook, what does it do? Uh, it, it is a standalone binary. It, it, it also has a Docker image. You can run it within Kubernetes, but uh, I prefer it run outside of Kubernetes because you don't want to run a monitoring solution within the platform that may be having an issue. Uh, so it's an external uh, to KTS binary. It, does source side debugging uh, and it needs to be run on the node that runs the source pod. Uh, it imitates the pod uh, as I as I uh, spoke about earlier. Why did I do this, right? Because as you know, networking is fundamentally uh, hard to debug and, and it is also, un the network is unreliable and most issues need to be debugged in my environments, in the app that's causing the issue. Uh, and 
the aim of this tool is to make that network debugging easy and not have people shy away from it or get scared of it. Uh, time is of the essence for debugging things. Uh, the problem might correct itself. Uh, so knowing that there's a problem uh, is important because Kubernetes is built to fix itself, but then uh, if there's a problem, then it's good to know about it because if it keeps compounding, there might be a large scale uh, downtime. Uh, automating a lot of those steps that you saw in on, on the flowchart, one, it's hard. You might probably need to know a bunch of networking technology and tools. The idea is with KDS Netlook, you're able to automate that. It is automated, so you're able to run it easily and then get some kind of uh, feedback. Essentially give you that self-service debugging uh, and it's inspired by that node problem detector that, that's there in the GitHub repo. You should check that out too. Uh, what can it do today? Uh, it works with IPv6, IPv4 stacks. Uh, there are a bunch of checks that it runs. Uh, on the host side, when it's running on the host network namespace, it runs uh, connectivity check for the gateway, API server, uh, it, it runs. If there are multiple API servers in a highly available cluster, it checks all of them. When it comes to pods, it again looks at gateway. It looks at uh, if it's able to talk to the API server, it does DNS by looking at um, DNS lookup. Uh, it also does PMTO discovery, which is a big one uh, that I've seen causing issues. Uh, and it also looks at various uh, IP endpoints for a service. So if a service has 20 pods that's backed by it, it's going to reach each of these 20 pods and see if everything's working. Because if there's a partial degradation where you have 18 pods working out of 20, you want a tool to tell you that. So this tool will do that for you. Uh, we'll quickly go to the demo. Uh, I'm hoping I'll be able to give you five minutes on the demo, but what you'll see in the demo is that uh, there are uh, three nodes, uh, two workers and a, uh, and a control pen node. KTS Netlook binary is installed on all, all of the nodes. And there is a busy box part that I've deployed as well as the host names part, which is my app uh, backed by a service, fronted by a service. Um, so let's quickly take a look at this uh, and switch to the demo. So what you can see here uh, is the number of nodes and I have a bunch of containers running there. Um, but if you look at, uh, uh, get all um, minus so wide. Uh, you'll see that the host names app is deployed, busybox is deployed. Uh, I have a service that's backing host names. It's a cluster IP service, not load balancer. Uh, and uh, there's also traffic which you can ignore. So we'll see two cases here. We'll mainly see east west communication and how KTS Netlook helps in, in that. Um, and the first case we'll see is where the communication stops working uh, due to maybe say a network policy, right? So let's see um, if things are working fine now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a HTTP get on the DNS uh, entry for my host names app from my busy box, which is app A to app B. And if you look at it, it works. And it gives you K242K, which is one of the pods running there. If you run the same command again, you're gonna get a reply from another one. So it seems to be working fine, right? Uh, and if you look at it, BCBox is running on worker one. So on worker one, I have KDS Netlook installed here. So if I do a Vagrant demo, this is where my KDS Netlook binary is. If I do a host and run it, I'm going to get a bunch of checks. And it, what it's saying is my cluster looks healthy, everything looks good. And uh, you can run a debug command that gives you more information of what it did. Uh, and how did how did it did all all of these tests? You can make it silent to get a JSON blob um, in case you want to program it. Now, what we'll do, right? We'll we'll look at a case where we're trying to uh, where there's a problem in the node, and I'll do this by applying a network policy that's basically going to deny all traffic, right? And now if I run a pod check, right? Let's see what happens. 
it's trying to run it. And it'll give you a result that says host checks were good, but then it's not able to connect to the destination pod. Uh, PMTU, path MTU is also not working. Uh, let's look at debug information. So what's happening? It's trying to run a destination pod connectivity check and it failed. It's trying to run PMTU and it failed. So that, that's the result that you get. Um, let's remove this. Happening yesterday. And let's run the same test again. Looks like things are back, back, back to good. So this tool kind of gives you or helps you figure out what's going on, right? And you can see the debug. It also tries various, it does a binary search to get to the right MTU. And it tells you that there is a, the, the path MTU is 1480 and things are working. So let's look at an MTU problem next. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a kubectl exec minus it. Let's go into busybox and change the MTU to something bigger, 1500. And 1500 is normal, right? It, it, so it's the default uh, um, size. But then we are running an overlay uh, with Calico in IPIP mode. So it is going to need 20 bytes for the encapsulation header. So if I do this, now let's see what happens. Connectivity check works, uh, but something failed, right? So let's look at what failed. PMTU check for destination IP actually failed because it's not able to get things from there. Uh, and if you look at the PMTU discovery, it got a reflection for 1424 bytes, but it didn't get something for 1500. So there you go. Now let's fix this again and fix it to 1480 and then run this again. The MTU for destination is 1480 and everything looks good. We can do the same thing for external IP as well. So let, let me say external IP. Let's try 1.1.1.1. More checks added to it. And you can see that the external IP connectivity check also works. I have an issue on my laptop running. I'm running Vagrant boxes on the laptop for this demo. So if you if I try to use external IP 8.8.8.8, that is an issue. And you will see that with the tool. And that's pretty much for the demo. Uh, you can run it as a Docker container. You can run it within Kubernetes as an app. Uh, all of that information is present in, uh, in the GitHub repo. Uh, with that, uh, I hope you've had a good session and learned something about Kubernetes networking, looked at various problems that uh, can happen within Kubernetes when you're deploying pods or apps, as well as hopefully KDS Netlook will help you uh, to get to that first level debugging and, and at least finding out where the problem could, could, could lie and then getting to the right people for fixing it. Um, as always, looking for contributors, uh, there's a lot of things that needs to be done. The tool doesn't do any automation for the external to pod today, it only does source site debugging. Uh, it's not CNI aware today, so we can do a lot more to that. Um, so yeah, anybody interested, please do uh, look at GitHub, reach, reach out to me on Slack or GitHub. Um, again, the link is on, on the first page. Uh, feedback for the session, welcome, and uh, Q&A.